Aloha e komomai. I'm Nathaniel Miller, and on this episode of Frontiers, we're taking a trip out to the Aloha State of Hawaii. Hawaii is the only state in the Union that has a royal palace. The Hawaiian monarchy was sadly very short-lived. It was founded in 1795 by King Kamehameha the Great, but it was tragically overthrown by American business interests in the late 19th century. However, despite being so short-lived, the Hawaiian monarchy left behind many legacies that still benefit peoples on the island today, including my own family, but I'll talk about that later. Iolani Palace in Honolulu is a very famous place, as it should be. It is an architectural and cultural treasure for the Hawaiian people. But what is a palace? When we think of palaces, we think of grand edifices like Iolani Palace or the great castles of Europe and Asia. However, a palace is simply a royal residence. A palace is any place, big or small, that a monarch and his or her family call home. Hidden up in the Nu'uanu Valley on Oahu is a small little treasure most people don't know exists. You see, Oahu and Hawaii don't just have one royal palace. It has two, and this is the story of Hanaya Kamalama. Born into the Hawaiian nobility in 1836, Emma Kaleleo Nalani Naia Rook became an accomplished musician, dancer, and equestrian. She married King Kamehameha IV in 1856, a year after he ascended the throne. Immediately taking charge of palace affairs, Emma also began to focus on humanitarian efforts. Hawaii cultural norms placed great emphasis on the ali'i, the nobility, providing humanitarian aid to their people, and Emma's gaze fell upon medicine. She and King Kamehameha IV founded Queen's Hospital in 1859. She also founded St. Andrew's Priory School. This ensured girls were given the same level of education that traditionally had only been given to boys. Every royal couple needs a retreat from which they can withdraw and get away from the, the stresses and cares of ruling their nation. A place where they can recharge, spend time with their families, and kind of reset themselves to get back to the business of taking care of their people. Well, King Kamehameha IV and Queen Emma found this in a little cottage that was originally owned by her uncle, John Young II. This little cottage was Hanaya Kamalama, which has come to be known as Queen Emma's Summer Palace. Fabricated in Boston in 1848, then disassembled and shipped to Hawaii, the house was built in the Nu'uanu Valley and purchased in 1850 by Young, who later gifted the estate to his niece, Queen Emma, in 1857. The king and queen used the house as a summer palace until King Kamehameha IV died in 1863. After this tragedy, Queen Emma resided in the small, comfortable abode until her own passing in 1885. The Kingdom of Hawaii bought the estate following Emma's death. However, once the monarchy was overthrown by American businessmen in 1893, royal properties became the subject of debate. The territorial government of Hawaii declared Hanai Kamalama a public park back in 1911. The city and county of Honolulu was directed to take care of it, but this did not ensure the house's safety. In fact, plans were floated and even advanced to demolish the structure and turn it into a baseball park. The Daughters of Hawaii sprang into action to save the home, and by 1915 they had enough money and they purchased the house and the land surrounding it. Next began the arduous work of turning it into a proper museum. This meant restoring the house to its 19th century appearance and condition gathering artifacts, and interpreting them so they could tell the story of King Kamehameha IV, Queen Emma, their life and times, and their many accomplishments. Today, visitors can either register for a guided tour or take a self-guided journey through this small, stately, and deeply historic home. In true Hawaiian style, visitors are only allowed to tour the house after they've removed their shoes. Alongside honoring traditional Hawaiian cultural practices, the Daughters of Hawaii insist on the no-shoe policy for an eminently practical reason. The floors and carpets in the palace are originals. These items have been in use for more than 150 years, and barefoot guests put little stress on the artifacts, thereby helping ensure their preservation. The Grand Ballroom, or Edinburgh Room, welcomes visitors to the palace. Emma added this room in 1869 for the visit of Great Britain's Duke of Edinburgh. Currently, this room contains one of Hawaii's most cherished artifacts, a unique feathered cloak called an ahu'ula. This particular ahu'ula is uniquely precious because it belonged to King Kamehameha the Great himself. The powerful warrior chief captured it during the latter part of the 18th century as he fought to unify the islands, and he later wore it for ceremonial occasions. 
Made from nearly 500,000 feathers, the ahu'ula is a fascinating example of the detailed feather work practiced by the Hawaiian people. The artisans didn't kill the birds from which they gathered feathers. Instead, they captured the needed bird, carefully plucked a few feathers, and then released the bird back into the wild. Visitors will also see numerous tall feathered standards called kahili throughout the Edinburgh Room and the rest of the palace. Kahili served as standards of the nobility, with skilled artisans using different feathers to symbolize different things, such as the noble's rank and place in the island's hierarchy. Perhaps the most somber room in the house is the bedroom of young Prince Albert. The heir to the throne had a very short life, dying at only four years old. Emma and Kamehameha IV welcomed their only son, Albert, in 1858. The young prince was not only doted on by his parents, but also by the people of Hawaii. Sadly, the precocious child died at the age of four. The prince's bedroom contains numerous artifacts, two of the most significant being his cradle, which is considered a state treasure, and a red fireman's jacket given to him by Engine Company No. 4. You see, Albert was only three years old when he informed his father he wanted to be a fireman, and he was adopted as an honorary firefighter by Engine Company 4. The Nyakamalama Center Hall contains another poignant artifact relating to young Prince Albert. This is a silver christening vessel sent by Queen Victoria of England. The Hawaiian monarchy maintained a close relationship with the British monarchy, and Queen Emma requested that Queen Victoria become Prince Albert's godmother. Victoria obliged, sending the silver christening vessel, along with some holy water, to Hawaii. Following Albert's death, Emma treasured the vessel and her friendship with Victoria. The two queens corresponded until Emma's own death in 1885. The king and queen's bedroom contains a koa wood bed originally owned by King Kamehameha III, who passed it on to Queen Emma. Queen Emma and King Kamehameha IV were noted for their happy, loving marriage, and Queen Emma declined to use this room following her husband's death. Instead, she turned the dining room into her own bedroom, living there the rest of her life. The magnificent sleigh bed and chest belonged to her, and it's believed she used the large koa hutch to store her china collection. I said at the beginning of this episode that my family has a unique tie to Queen Emma. Now, it's not a blood tie. We are not native Hawaiian by any stretch. My people didn't arrive in the islands until the early 20th century, well after Queen Emma had passed away. Queen's Hospital was founded to take care of the native Hawaiian population, but in the true aloha spirit, they opened their doors to care for all peoples on the island, native and non-native alike. This ensured expectant mothers across Oahu had a safe place to give birth, and many babies came into the world at Queen's Hospital, including my father. Today, Queen's Hospital is known as Queen's Medical Center. It's one of the largest medical centers in Hawaii and still provides top-notch care to anybody in the islands. This is one of Emma's legacies and perhaps the one that touches the most people through the years. Hanaya Kamalama offers visitors a very unique window, actually, in, a sen in essence, a door, to step back in time to the 19th century. Touring this house in your bare feet, seeing the artifacts that the king and queen lived and used in their daily life, allows you to get a sense of what it was like to live in Hawaii just before industrialization changed the islands and the rest of the world. Each of the Hawaiian islands boasts a unique feel, an ambiance and spirit all its own. Oahu spirit can often be obscured by the hurly-burly of 21st century American life, but that spirit can still be found if a visitor is willing to get away from Waikiki for a day. Take some time to visit Hanaya Kamalama. You'll experience island life as it was, and you'll also get an intimate introduction to the story of the Hawaiian people and their cultural treasures. Until we meet next time here on Sparks 1524, Mahalo Nui Loa, go do some great things.